Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Sri Pushkar Chemicals and Fertilizers Q1 FY25 conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Company Secretary, Mr. Nitesh Pangle. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, Good evening everyone, and we welcome all the participants to Shri Pushta Chemicals and Fertilizers Limited Q1 FY25 earnings call. Joining us today from the management side, we have Mr. Puneet Makaria, Chairman and Managing Director. We have Mr. Mr. Deepak Beriwala, Chief Financial Officer. Now I will hand over the call to Mr. Puneet Makaria for, for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Nitish. A very good evening and a very warm welcome to all my friends for the Q1 FY25 earning calls of Shri Pushkar Chemicals and Fertilizers Limited. I hope you all have been an opportunity to review the financial results and investor presentation, which has been uploaded on the stock exchange as well as on the company's websites. Friends, now we take you through the financial and operational performance of our company for Q1 FY25. We are pleased to begin FY2025 with a strong performance access to our operations reflecting the effectiveness of our strategic initiatives. In terms of sales volumes, our chemical division achieved a significant increase with sales rising from 11,381 tons in Q4 FY24 to 15,943 tons in Q1 FY25, representing a 40% quarter-on-quarter growth and a 17.8% year-on-year increase basis. Our fertilizer division also performed well with sales growing from 57,085 metric tons in Q4 FY24 to 69,722 metric ton in Q1 FY25, reflecting a 22.1% of quarter-on-quarter increase and 23.5% on year-on-year growth. This overall growth in sales volume has led to 25.1% growth on quarter-on-quarter increase and a 22.4% on year-on-year improvement in total sales, reaching 85,665 metric tons in Q1 FY25. On the financial performance, there has been a strong input. The total revenue from operations increased by 1.8% quarter on quarter and 10.7% on year on year basis, reaching 194.2 crores in Q1 FY25. This growth was clearly driven by the, the fertilizer division, which saw a 21.9% growth on quarter on quarter basis and 14% on year to year basis. Despite challenging in the chemical segments, revenue in this division grew by 6.9% on year. Highlighting our reliance on a competitive market environment, a capex budget of 215 crores was allocated last year to enhance the capacity of our chemical business through backward and forward integration, and our fertilizer business through manufacturing of complementary products. We are also committed to sustainability and in line with the commitment we are investing in renewable energy also. During the quarter, we have incurred 1.90 crores towards the establishment of 3.8 megawatt DC solar power plant under the open access scheme of Maharashtra State Electricity Distribution Limited. This investment, along with the additional of 6.63 crores in capex invested in our chemical and fertilizer verticals is a part of 125 crores allocated last year for these strategic initiatives. The total capex for these projects is, is being financed through internal approval and a preferential issue to the promoter. The promoter have already brought in capital by exercising warrants. Total capital of 15.13 crores has been raised from the promoter by way of preferential allotment to promoters, ensuring that Sherry Pushka remains net cash positive through these investments. Additionally, we have a known in deposit facility available at 107.52 crores, which provides us with financial flexibility to support our ongoing and future investments. Looking ahead, we remain focused on leveraging on strength of our chemical and fertilizer division, enhancing our operational efficiencies, and sustaining the growth movement we have achieved in this quarter. Our strategic priorities for the, for the remainder of the year include further capacity expansion advancing our sustainability initiatives, 
and exploring new market opportunities, all while maintaining a strong financial position. We are optimistic about the macroeconomic environment, particularly with the contained focus on infrastructure development and increased construction activities. These factors are expected to sustain demand for our products in the coming quarters, providing us a solid foundation for the growth. Friends, now with this, I would like to hand over the phone to Mr. Deepak, our CFO, who will provide more detailed insight into our operational and financial performance for Q1 FY25. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to provide an overview of our operational and financial performance for Q1 FY25. During the Q1 FY25, we achieved significant growth across both the, our chemical and fertilizer divisions. In the chemical division, sales volume increased by 40% on quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, reaching 15,943 metric tons, and demonstrated a 17.8% year-on-year growth. Our fertilizer division also saw a robust performance, with sales volume reaching by 22.1% quarter-on-quarter to 69,722 metric tons, representing a 23.5% year-on-year increase. Overall consolidated sales volume grew by 25.1% on quarter on quarter basis and 22.4% on year on year basis totaling 85,665 metric ton for the quarter. In Q1 FY25, our chemical division generated 91.6 crore in revenue reflecting a 6.9% increase year on year. Our fertilizer division demonstrated strong performance with revenue reaching 102.6 crore a 21.8% quarter-on-quarter increase and 14% growth on year-on-year -year basis. Our total revenue grew by 1.8% quarter-on-quarter and 10.7% on year-on-year, -year, amounting to rupees 194.2 crores. On the profitability side, gross profit rose to 66.8 crore, marking a 5.7% quarter-on-quarter increase and 11.5% on year-on-year -year increase. Evita came in at rupees 17.7 crore, showing a strong year on year increase of 26%. Profit after tax was rupees 12.8 crore, representing a 62% increase year on year. With this, I would like to open the floor by any question or discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Harshil Solanki from Equitri Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, team. Uh, good afternoon. Sir, I have two questions. Uh, first is on the Bangladesh situation. Can you throw some light on how much this will impact our, our business? And on similar lines, uh, Turkey also is a big market for us. So if you can highlight the potential risks from both the two markets. Uh, see, Mr. Solanki, Bangladesh is definitely, uh, you know, both Bangladesh as well as Turkey is a big market. And uh, we sell substantial products, uh, you know, volumes in Bangladesh. And we have a substantial business in Bangladesh as well as in Turkey. First of all, let me tell you, whatever the business we do in Bangladesh, this is against the confirmed LCs. Without LC, there is no business. Secondly, Looking at, as of now, the political instability in, you know, in Bangladesh, what we are looking at. And uh, once we face these kind of a challenges in Bangladesh, definitely it was a matter of great concern for us. Few shipments were on the way, few shipments were at the port. So at that time, we holded the, you know, the entire operations in Bangladesh. We, you know, we closely evaluated the situation in Bangladesh, spoke to multiple people there, and uh, took their opinion and you know based upon our uh, inputs what we get from our office in Bangladesh because we have got a country head based in Dhaka and he is uh, stationed there 
and uh, whatever the inputs we understood uh, you know from the industrial sources market intelligence from our people from the other uh, you know our you know this our existing customers in my personal opinion i see uh, presently we definitely see a problem but this is not going to be a long uh, term issue i think this will you know other continue for 15 20 days or maybe maximum uh, you know within a month or so i believe that this should be over definitely this would be you know disturbance for coming 15 20 days 30 days till it doesn't stabilize but overall view of the government in pakistan uh, you know in bangladesh and the present mr yunus mohammed who is uh, you know definitely you know a very lovely person and uh, his main focus is on the you know the economic and financial stability of bangladesh one of the customers has asked us to hold the shipments rather they have said ki you know don't the whole that the shipment you can uh, dispatch the goods so i don't think that in long term this is going to make any major impact but yes uh, for few more days we can see these disturbances and based upon the media reports what we see from the media is big disturbing but what i see in bangladesh what i get inputs from there is not as uh, worst as we saw in the media all the units in bangladesh have started majority of them has started people have resumed to their offices and let me tell you one more thing also that bangladesh cannot afford to ignore india because 80% economic of the bangladesh is on the textiles and garments you know and in that it is you know majority of the cotton is being exported from india majority of the dyes and chemicals is being exported from india so i don't think that in long term it will be a major issue as far as turkey is concerned particularly turkey we don't see any problem we don't see any hiccups as of now and uh, there are no issues in turkey as of now yes about the currency it is always there we uh, you know we always play safely into the you know this currency the uh, issues with the uh, turkey but uh, i don't see any major issue in turkey also so this may be a matter of 15 20 days more for bangladesh it will be stabilized okay got it And sir, other players are saying that uh, there is more people are trying to shift to India, the textile players which are there in Bangladesh. So, are we hearing something from a customer, and are we positioned to benefit if there is a shift towards India? Talking about the textile industry in India? Yeah, the other garment manufacturers which are there. Mr. Solanki, your... my personal opinion is that you know Bangladesh is a huge market. and uh, you know their uh, the cost of production is extremely low in spite of the import cotton the import technology the import chemicals apart from that also it's a huge market and the globe cannot uh, afford to lose bangladesh because of their duty structures because of you know the you know this import duty structures if it is done from bangladesh so it has to be bangladesh maybe because of this political instability people are thinking for various other options but let me tell you once is you know once it gets stabilized everybody will move back to bangladesh you got it sir so and in terms of our realizations for this quarter it has dropped by 39% uh when it particularly dropped by 39% pop from 93000 to 57000 so any particular reason for for dyes i'm chemicals i'm referring Oh yeah, what you are saying? Can you, can you repeat your questions? Yeah, so our realizations for the chemical segment have dropped by 39% uh, QOQ basis. So can you highlight the reason behind this? Because the volumes have grown on a lower base, but ideally realizations should have also been similar. So if you divide a 91,000 crore revenue by 16,000 tons of chemical sales. Okay. So what you are saying is that it has dropped. Just a second. Rather, I can see there is an increase of seven percent from uh, year to year, quarter to quarter, like that. Way. How come you are saying it is 39 percent drop? I don't see where you saw this figure 39 percent drop. Because see, in in Q1 FY24 we did 85.7 and Q1 FY25 we did 9.91.6. It is 7% increase, Mr. Solanki. 
um, I, maybe I'll take this question offline. Uh, that's not mm -hmm. an issue. Four quarter, eleven thousand total sales, including Q1, fifteen. So it is increased, na? It is not an increase. Percent increase. Yeah, but Mr. Solanki is saying it is decreased. Sir, rather it is forty percent increase, Mr. Solanki, in Q4 FY24 to Q1 FY25. I am referring to Q1 Q, but uh, no issues. We can take this uh, offline separately. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, this was it. Any questions from you, Mr. Thank Solanki? You. No, this was it from my side. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Nitya Shah from Kamakya Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, the first part I wanted to understand was that the solar plant that you have put up, were there any uh, benefits or cost reductions due to that in this quarter visible? Uh, see, about this new plant of 3.8 megawatt, we are yet to get the connectivity, which we are hopeful uh, to get it by the end of this month. So probably half of this quarter you will see, you know, about this Q1 you will see in uh, next one call. So just for my understanding, FY25, what is completely of... established, we are just waiting for the connectivity approval from the, you know, the, this NSCP. Right, sir, I understood that. I'm asking that... Uh... According to you, what would be the cost saving in, if you could quantify the cost saving for this entire year due to this, which would, you know, improve the margin? See, generally, uh, what we have seen in the past, because we already are having two plants of uh, solar, which is of 2.6 megawatt uh, on DC basis each. Generally, from one plant, we usually get uh, around 32 to 35 lakhs of units per year. Got it. As a generation, okay. which so, can be around uh, close to 3 lakhs uh, units uh, per month. And uh, you can calculate the benefit in terms of at least uh, 6 to 7 rupees per unit because we have been charged by around 3 rupees, including uh, you know, the losses, the charges, and uh, the willing charges and, and other charges also. So on an average, around 6.5 to uh, 7 rupees is the benefit on the basis of per unit. So I think this would substantially improve your margins. Definitely, sir. Because, uh, of a, because see, if you see, in uh, 3.8 megawatt DC, we should get close to 48 uh, lakhs of units uh, annually. Got it. Got it. And sir, in your uh, quarter one result, which I saw at the moment, there was an inventory gain of 3 crore rupees. So going forward, do you see uh, any high cost inventory impacting the margins a little bit in terms of cost of goods sold? Not on the uh, average. Uh, this is a uh, you know the ongoing process. It is difficult to say you know what we get in the next quarter. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes you know we are beneficial. Sometimes we are loser because you know once you are in business 24 by 7, uh, 12 months a uh, year, then you know these kind of uh, gains or losses keep on happening every quarter on quarter. So it is difficult to comment on that. Sir. Okay, understood, sir. Thank you. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Participants to ask a question may press star and one. Before we take our next participant, reminders to everyone to ask a question, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Pradeep Rawat from Yogya Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is uh, related to the CAPEX that we are doing of uh, 2015 crore. So out of this CAPEX, you have uh, explained in the last uh, question that uh, the saving from solar power plant. So my question was regarding the other CAPEXs that we are doing. So how much of the benefit can we expect from these CAPEX in terms of EBITDA? Uh, see, the total capex of 215 crores in is, you know, is in various, uh, uh, you know, this uh, 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 verticals, right? Uh, which is chemical, fertilizers, solar, as well as, uh, uh, you know, in our, uh, this, uh, the 100% home subsidy also at Madhya Bharat also. So overall, if you see whatever the capex we plan, and out of our experience, we have seen that generally the repayback of the entire capex is within three to four crores. Oh, sorry, within three to four years. 
So whatever we are putting, and you know, uh, let me tell you, these effects uh, are coming and will be coming in in a phase-wise manner, right? So what you will see, uh, you know, this uh, our capital, our the, you know, our this invested capital will go high, and return on the invested capital you will see bit lesser on the basis of that because you know, so you know, this is an ongoing capex. We believe that the entire capex should be completed. Uh, Majority of the capex should be completed by first quarter uh, of 25-26, and post that we will be able to see a very good, uh, you know, performance of the company because this entire capex uh, we are trying to get it funded through internal approval. I think in March 2024 we have invested 50 crore rupees totally towards uh, this capex from the internal approval. Apart from investing 50 crore, still company maintains three-digit, uh, you know, investment portfolio with it. Yeah. So, my question was uh, regarding uh, that our current ROC is uh, less than 10, like it's around 10%, and you have done capex of uh, uh, capexes that would yield a payback period of three to four years. So. Is, uh, would it be a good assumption that our uh, fu fu in future our ROC could go up to 20 to 25 percent? Sorry, sir, I am not understanding your question. Brother, but one thing I can tell you, uh, you know, whatever the capex is uh, you see, whatever the capital employed you see as of now in the financials, right? Most of that capital is uh, CWIP basis. It has not started the production, so therefore you might be calculating that the you know the returns on the capital employed is less. But once the entire investment gets completed and it comes in a proper streamline, then uh, you know you will see a decent amount of uh, you know this uh, results into this thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm able to address your question or not yet. Yes, sir. Sir, just uh, my question was that we can expect in the future how much ROC we can expect in the future. Okay. 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 Can you highlight on the growth of the fertilizer segment that we achieved this quarter and uh, how we witnessed such uh, good growth and how do you see a uh, future for this segment? Sir, at least uh, about this year, you know, the, the first season is almost over. And as far as the second season is concerned, what we see as of now in the market that there is a huge shortage in terms of the DAP. Right, and the present import price of the DAP is not workable uh, towards the subsidy provided by the government. Though government has given an additional subsidy in terms of DAP for 3,500 rupees per ton, but I don't think that is also be going to be any kind of beneficial to government. Looking at these aspects, DAP will be in short supply. Apart from that, uh, present, you know, uh, presently some kind of a supply chain disturbance also because of the global, uh, you know, the geopolitical issues. I particularly see that this season is going to be very good for the fertilizer business and uh, we hopefully, you know, we are trying to at least get a 20% growth, 20-25% growth in terms of fertilizer business compared to the last year. Yeah, understood. Uh, and my last question, another uh, basic question. So uh, one clarification is our chemical division only majorly serves textile and dye segment. Is, that, is the understanding correct? Major. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you and all the best. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. The next question is from the line of Dalshil Pandya from F Interest Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, Marie. Yeah, Mr. Pandya. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, just one follow up question uh, regarding your guidance that you have given for the full year. Uh, are we maintaining that? Uh, we have given a guidance to at least uh, uh, the, the, you know, 15% growth in terms of top line. And uh, because generally if you see that our quarter win, one is always the most lean period uh, during the whole uh, year. 
and uh, generally you know it keeps on improving q1 is you know this q2 is better than q3 is more better and q4 is the best period amongst what we have seen based upon our experience and whatever the guidance we have given that there will be 15 minimum 15% growth uh, we hopefully to achieve minimum 15% growth in the top line and the profitability will be uh, greatly improved okay and sir uh, on on the ebitda margin front because we heard you saying 16 17 kind of percent of margins that would be would be doing for this fiscal in this year we believe that we should be able to achieve uh, you know 12 to 13 percent of ebitda margin at least in this financial year because you know after two years of the meltdown we are seeing this stabilizing here in this particular year so i think this will slowly and gradually improve you know to this improve and in this financial year we hopefully we are quite uh, you know confident not hopeful we are quite confident that at least we will achieve 12 to 13% of the ebitda margin mm -hmm. and substantially uh, uh, you know for the next year 25 26 we should be back to our earlier margins which you know which measure of the distance we will cover in this financial year okay and uh, oh i got it and uh, sir uh, This uh... hello, am I audible? Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yes, sir. So you said the capex would be live by Q1 FY26. So uh, we are confident on uh, you know achieving that because we are achieving what? Pardon, sir. Why are we achieving for the confidence, sir? Achievement of what? This capex. This what? capex will be live by Q1 FY26. Well, hopefully we should be able to do that, and I don't see any particular hiccups for not doing so. Because see, the company has got finances ready with them. We are not banking on on any kind of a borrowings. The company has got a decent and a very excellent team in the industry. We have got our technical expertise, so I don't see any particular, you know, any specific hiccups for not achieving it. At the most, this could be, you know, this one or two months here and there. That's all. Nothing else could be there. Okay, and uh, the last. Okay. Okay, got it. And looking at the fertilizer volume for this quarter, uh, we are confident on achieving three uh, lakh tons for this year. Right, sir. I, sir, I fail to understand why you are saying confident of achieving to you know this capex. Why you are saying confident of achieving sales target? Sir, I will. Mean, sir, may you please don't uh, ask me about my confidence. I have a better confidence than what you have on your question. I'm sorry. Uh, really sorry, sir. If you are uh, upset with this, sir, just asking because you know the revenue guide, the EBITDA guidance at the last meet we got was 16 to 17 percent. So asking for a confident answer, nothing. We always said that the company has got a potential of achieving EBITDA margins to 15 to 17 percent. I will say, oh, you know, the you know, this always said that. Still, I maintain on the same. But my humble submission to you is that since we have been seeing a depression here for the last two to two and a half years. This year, you know, we see a good uh, business stability and sustainability. In this particular year, we see a, you know, we see a easy growth of at least 12 to 13 percent of EBITDA margins. Subsequently, in the next financial year, that is 25-26, we are quite hopeful to achieving our earlier EBITDA margins of 15 to 17 percent. All right, all right. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, really, uh, really sorry if you are uh, a bit. No, no, sir. Please, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhawal Jain from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Please, Mr. Dhawal, go ahead. Uh, sir, I just wanted to know that you told uh, that the Bangladesh uh, issue and the whatever the unrest is happening over there, so it might hamper your sales uh, over there for a month or twenty days. I just wanted to know out of this 91 crores of uh, dies that we have uh, uh, done this year, how much it contributes to Bangladesh and how much contributes to Turkey? If you have a number, sir, approximately 35 percent would be contributing to Bangladesh and Turkey. Out of uh, 91 crores, or uh, in the middle. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 35 percent cumulatively of Bangladesh and Turkey together. Uh, approximately, I'm saying. Right, sir. Sir, uh, one more and question. Out of total volume, if you will see out of 91 crore, 
you know, generally we do an annual business of around 35 crores rupees also to Bangladesh and Turkey and our total volume if you see this is around 5 percent. Okay sir. Uh, perfect. I just have one more question. I think uh, the first uh, participant mentioned that uh, the realization have decreased instead of the chemical uh, uh, this uh, volumes increasing. Uh, QOQ, why, why we see a growth of 7% in revenue as well as volumes of 17%, but I see a, a dip in the realization uh, QOQ, so I just needed to know the reason for that. Sir, basically the prices have, uh, you know, depressed in Q1 in comparison with the Q4, and uh, that's a bit uh, dip into the, you know, this realization. Wherein the volumes uh, we have grown because the raw material prices have come to a stability early as the prices were bit on a higher side. So that is mainly affecting that. Because in Q and uh, that is mainly because of the acid business also that has gone uh, increase in uh, Q4 to Q1. Right. Now, and going forward, uh, like uh, the prices or the realization is going to improve or this is the, like the bottom down? The prices will come to a stability. I don't see any major uh, changes into the pricing sector as of now. So this will be a keep on maintaining in a similar okay. trend. Okay. Okay. So, so that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Singh from Robo, Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, can you please throw some light on the demand of dyes and dyes intermediaries? Is it increasing QOQ? Uh, how is it trending from last two, three quarters? So, basically, business is coming to stability uh, in comparison with our earlier period. And uh, we see that there is a decent amount of demand. And in my personal opinion, the first, uh, you know, improvement is visible through the demand. Then the second improvement is visible through the pricing. So I see a good demand as of now. And let me tell you, company is already having at least uh, 35 to 40 days of the order book presently in our hand. In spite of our increased capacity in unit 5 also, uh, you know, we are running our plants uh, up to a decent capacity. And we have good amount of orders for that. Okay, all right, sir. And uh, if you can share the utilization of both segments, fertilizer and chemicals. Do we have a utilization of our dyes and chemicals? 70 to 75%. Sir, it is around 70 to 75% of the utilization in chemicals as well as in fertilizers. On okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Harshal Solanki from Equitary Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, my question has been answered. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may press star and 1. The next question is from the line of Pradeep Rawat from Yogya Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the follow-up. Sir, you just said that you have an uh, order in hand of 40 to 45 days. So, uh, usually do we have a similar kind of order book or is it usually lesser and we have uh, currently more orders in hand given the demand situation? Generally, we always have, uh, you know, 15 to 20 days order book in terms of fertilizer. In dyes, we have generally 35 to, uh, you know, almost a month order book as well as same in intermediates also around 15 to 20 days. So now on it, you know, on this overall basis, if you will see that we have got good volumes and demand also in fertilizers also and in dyes and tunnels also. So totally, if you will see that we have good order book for at least 35 to 40 days. But you know, there's the point of our real experience. If you see that the order position has improved, there's a lot of inquiry, lot of demand also. You know, so overall the situation has improved uh, much better in comparison to the last quarters. Yeah, understood. And uh, uh, my next question is a basic question. So uh, uh, our margins have dropped to 8% uh, from a historic margin of 15 to 17%. So uh, can you uh, explain the reason behind it? I have already addressed this question in my earlier replies. I said for the last, uh, the, the, you know, 
two to two and a half years, uh, in the entire industry was in a bit of uh, depression. Now the situation has started improving. And in this particular year, if I see, uh, and uh, I'm quite confident that the company would be achieving close to 17 to 8 percent of fat margin and around 12 to 13 percent of EBITDA margin. Yeah, I, and this is particularly to the chemical side, right? Yes, this, sir, we always talk about on a consult basis, which includes of our 100% uh, known subsidiaries, as well as our fertilizer and chemical uh, division jointly together. Because looking at our business model, we don't calculate uh, segment-wise profitability. Okay, understood, understood. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Puneet Makaria for closing comment. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining our as a Q1 FY25 earning call. We believe that if you have any further questions, please feel free to connect with our investor relations advisor, search their partners, and we'll be happy to address all your queries. Thanks once again. Take care. Thank you. On behalf of Sri Pushkar Chemical and Fertilizers, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect.